I first went to my G my first GS8, I was surrounded by so many other people who had similar identities to me, and it made me feel like I wasn't alone and isolated like I am in normal communities. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm off to talk to the first GSA ever north of 60 and here in the Yukon at F.H. Collins High School. Let's go. I've been really curious about GSAs because I never had one. I'm just like, there's just like never that was just not a thing. And I wish I did because I feel like if I had like a space where it was cool to go hang out with people, like just to talk about gender and sexuality would have been like a huge step. As a result, you know, talking about sexuality and gender and LGBTQ rights has just been like a big part of like my passion, which is what brought me here to Whitehorse because I heard that FH Collins just started the first GSA in north of 60. North of 60. That's sick. So how did that come to be? Like, what's the background of the GSA here? I think it started in 2010, so it's about, it's been about six years. Somewhere in its earlier <laughs> stages, it won an award for mm -hmm. being... Like the only GSA. Like, for, like the only ass. GSA yeah. up here, and it was, like, yeah. great. Rick Mercer gave us a shout-out on his no show. Way. I'm like, wow, this random little town up way north that nobody knows exists mm -hmm. is winning a big award for yeah. being so inclusive. How would you guys define or describe what a GSA is and what it does? What's its purpose? To me, GSA is a place that's not just for gay people and it's not just for straight people. It's for anybody and everybody to come together and to realize that equality is needed always. It's not that new things are being invented, but it's that people are finally shining light on everybody's personal um, sexualities. I think for me, when I was coming to terms with my identity, the only thing I wanted to do was to be surrounded by people who were like me. And when I first went to my G my first GS8, I was surrounded by so many other people who had similar identities to me, and it made me feel like I wasn't alone and isolated like I am in normal communities. Just everybody goes, and we just go, and we just sit there and talk with each other. We just don't pay attention to who we all are in terms of sexuality or gender. It's just we go and just have a good time with each other and then we'll think like, okay, what can we do like for the community to like raise awareness that we're here and that yeah. we exist, but mo a lot of the time we just hang out with each other. Yeah, like what happens at a GSA meeting? I've never been to a GSA meeting. <laughs> so sometimes we fundraise, sometimes we hold events, like sometimes we just hang out and talk and talk about mm -hmm. our days, but it's like Lachlan said, it's just nice to not have any sort of like pressure. Everybody's mm -hmm. just, just like completely themselves at GSA. You guys comfortable with sharing like a bit of your coming out experience and like mm -hmm. how you identify in terms of gender pronouns? Like what is your, you know, sexual and gender identity? So I have four gay parents, which is a long story on how all that dynamics works, but I identify as pansexual. It's basically you don't care what's in your pants, you know? <laughs> Growing up, I actually felt a bit of pressure not being you know, either straight or a lesbian. Coming out was hard for me, and a lot of people didn't understand why it was hard for me, because they're like, well, your parents will accept you, you know, because, you know, they're gay. But the reason why is because I was afraid that they wouldn't accept the fact that that I'm not gay and I'm not straight. You know, I'm, I'm somewhere in between. And that was something that was difficult for me to come to terms with. I feel like I wish I had more courage at the beginning. Yeah because if I had more courage, I could have been happier a lot sooner. It's like, the generation before you is like, I'm gay, and like, their parents are like, what, what? Mm -hmm. And it's still cool that even with gay parents, you can be like, I'm pansexual, and they're like, what? Huh? <laughs> What's that? Huh? When I first started questioning myself, I was really, really little. I, I always leaned towards the more masculine things, you know, the boy toys, well, that sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the uh, G.I. Joe figures were my favorite, and I loved like little race cars and all that kind of stuff. And as I grew older, the more I wanted to be called a him. When I went to Disneyland with my dad, the receptionist at the hotel mistook me for a boy. And I told my dad, if this is the land where dreams come true, why can't I, why can't I be a boy? So when I found out I was trans, I wanted to get right on it. I was so excited. I was like, hell yes, I'm just, I'm, I don't have to deal with my chest anymore. I'm just going to be a man 100% of the time. But when I came out, it was like a snapback to reality because my dad is really, really against that kind of stuff. So he kicked me out of his house. And I was homeless for a couple months until I moved back up here. Some of my family won't talk to me anymore. 
but I'm taking testosterone. I'm the happiest I've probably ever been, and I'm really, really glad I came out to everyone. Mine's, like, more confusing. Some people have, like, come to conclusions, but I haven't really. I know that I loved all the pink and frills, but I was a super big tomboy when I was little, and for a long time, I had crushes on lots of my friends who were girls but also boys and I heard about bisexual and both of my parents were really accepting for a longest the longest time they both thought I was a lesbian so they 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 found it weird when I told them that I wasn't but I don't really I don't <laughs> I know right I guess if I were to label it I would just say pansexual because I've never I just I like people for people and it's never really been anything past that i don't know it's all just kind of like a giant question mark with me you seem really fluid yeah you just seem I, like very just go with the flow i'm, I'm okay with whatever. it like i know that now i dress more feminine and my hair is more feminine but i really yeah i'm fine with fluidity i know what you mean like it could sound confusing yeah but it also sounds quite liberating yeah, yeah it sounds I, so like, free yeah like i'll just like, do what i want to do so everyone get off my back when i was young like i was a really effeminate boy and it was like very clear that I was gay and like when I came out it's like it was not a huge shock even though people were shocked. I think I identified way more feminine and female as a young person but more male as an adult. And I always kind of felt like did I betray my gayness? Like is that bad? Like am I trying to be somebody I'm not? So there's no reason why you shouldn't feel more feminine as a child and then grow up to be more masculine because we're all fluid people. Fluidity is yeah. in our brains. Not only that, That's but awesome. it's like it's one hundred percent okay to to change at any point in your life, right? And it's okay to try out different things. Like when I was confused AF, I just I tried <laughs> so hard to be feminine. I tried so hard. I wore a push up bra for three months. That was awful. And like <laughs> I just I dropped it all together. It lasted three months and I was like, I can't do this. So I put back on like the tight restricting like the tight restricting tank top and then put on a big hoodie. And I was fine like experimenting with that three months, but So for me, things start getting all questiony and such when I was about in grade six. I, was I like, like the shoulder action that came with it. <laughs> That's like my signature move. Every two words for me is a shoulder shaming. But like grade six, I was like what are these thoughts and feelings? What is happening? And so grade six was a lot of confusion and grade seven was the same. And that was around my era of like, kind of being a little more homophobic just to like show people, oh no, that's, I'm not gay, I'm straight, to like keep that illusion going. And then grade nine came to be and I was like, nah, girls aren't doing it for me. I'm like full on <laughs> gay. That went through, and then grade 10, I came out to like 120 people all at once at challenge day. It was How crazy. did that happen? Well, before I came out, like years ago, I was like, just, just my whole family was just like, oh, when you have a wife, when you have a wife, and it always made me feel so like, yeah. mm, I'm not going to have a wife. But my grandma, <clears throat> she was just like walking around the house, and I don't remember the rest of the conversation, but she was just like, you know, Lachran, when you're old and you have a wife, and then she paused. She said, or partner, and then she kept going with what she was saying. That's the only oh, time that saw. anybody it's has beautiful. like thought and stopped yeah. and said, mm -hmm. what if that's not how he is? Congrats to Amma, because she's the only one who managed to think that. <laughs> but so like, that's the story that I told at Challenge Day, and they were like going around with the microphone like, who wants to share? And I was like, sure, why not? And I got up and I said that, and all the people that I knew who were being mentors, they were all like, oh, Good job, I didn't know, it's good for you, good for you. I still don't really like to just define my sexuality as like gay. If I wanted to like put all those crazy fancy words to it, I'd probably just say homo romantic 90-10. And for, in case you don't know, that's like 90% gay, 10% straight, cause why not? And that's just like fluctuating homo around. Homo romantic 90-10. Yeah, I don't really That's I like your really biography care. title and other stories. <laughs> True. Like, what like, would you say to somebody saying that like, being this fluid is just making it more confusing. I think that I would say that that's probably the exact opposite of what it is. It's not making it more confusing, it's making it way more simple, at least for me. Because it's like, I just don't need to worry about it at all. Like, I don't need to worry about who I'm going to, like what gender my partner's going to be, which some people do need to worry about. Because I'm gender blind, I just, I don't, 
I don't mind. I can focus on more of finding the right kind of person rather than the right kind yeah, of gender. Yeah, cool. What sounds better? Having people be free and fluid and be who they are or like saying boys have to like trucks and girls have to like Barbies? Mm, like yeah. which one sounds better? Mm-hmm. Which one sounds less constricting? Which one sounds less confusing? Yeah. Which one sounds like kids are going to be happier, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, if you want to do something, do it. Like, let boys wear makeup. Dude, you see this contour? <laughs> it looks so good. Like, let people do what they want to do because everybody can make their own decisions. Yeah. About, like, five years ago, the school board where I grew up was banning GSAs. But, like, what would you say to somebody who had says, we don't want you to have a GSA? Why? I, I just think, ask them yeah. why. Yeah. Like, what's your reasoning behind that? And, you know, if they could give me a reason, like, I'm talking about a good reason that does not involve the Bible, I would listen. But the number one thing I think I would say is, has any gay person ever come up to you knocking on your door saying, hello, we'd like to convert you to the, um, to the, to the gay agenda? No, but guess who does? It's so true. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> one of the trustees during this time had said, well, why don't you just make, like, a respecting differences group? So don't openly say Gay Straight Alliance. How would you respond to that? If we were to just have this group like that, then it, it it's not necessarily always focusing on the issues that sometimes needs to be focused on. Yeah. You like, know, the reason I come to GS- GSA is to be with a community. And if there are other, like, if it isn't a gay community, then what is it? Like, why is this any different from just hanging out at, like, a coffee shop? Mm-hmm, exactly. I mean, I personally believe that you need to have a clear specification of a community group. Because that community group, number one, needs to know to other people saying, yo, if you're part of our community, this is where we're hanging out. That's how we build pockets of communities, you know? And it's all going to make up one big larger community, which is us as human beings. Uh, But we are going to assemble in different ways. And I think you guys assembling as a GSA, first north of 60, is like the ultimate. I really just wanted to ask, what advice would you have to people starting GSAs? I'm being put on the spot, so just be like, got this. Don't leave this conversation. Join our group chat by commenting below and subscribe here.